Hi guys, it's Kate, and this is a quick video that I made about number five on the antiderivatives worksheet for Math MB. This problem is really interesting because it gets right to the heart of the difference between speed and velocity. And you'll be doing several problems like this on your homework, and you might see something come up on a practice final exam. So let's take a look. The problem states that Ali is on a camping trip, and he sets out from his campsite at noon to wander along a trail. And we'll describe positions along the trail by how many meters north of the campsite they are. For example, position negative 10 is 10 meters south of the campsite. So what's interesting there is that position has a sign on it. It's not the total distance he's traveled, it's his position relative to the campsite. And so Ali's velocity, t minutes after noon, is v of t, and we're given this polynomial function, 3t squared minus 6t minus 9 meters per minute. Our first question gets us started. It says, what is Ollie's average velocity between noon and 12.04 p.m.? And remember that average velocity is defined to be change in position over change in time. Well, just like we said with this original issue where it's saying that position is described by how many meters north of the campsite we are, remember that position is not the same thing as distance traveled, and luckily our velocity here is discussing rate of change of position. This is really lucky for us because the way for us to utilize this hint that says, remember that average velocity is defined to be change in position over change in time. All we need to do to find change in position is take this velocity function and integrate it over the interval that we care about. And the interval is, of course, noon to 12.04 p.m. So that's 0 to 4. And that will give us our change in position or net change in position. Here I've set up the integral, and then term by term we want to take the antiderivative of each of these powers of t. And here's what we get. The antiderivative is t cubed minus 3t squared minus 9t. But of course we need to evaluate it at 4 and subtract off the evaluation at 0. Here it is. And our change in position is therefore going to be negative 20. We then want to put this over our change in time, which happens to be 4 minutes. So we have negative 20 over 4, which is negative 5. And our units are going to be meters per minute. The key there is realizing that the function that we're given is velocity, that position has a positive and negative significance, and so to find change in position, all we need to do is integrate the velocity function over our desired interval. Now the next question seems the same but it's different in very important ways. It asks what Ollie's average speed is between noon and 12.04 p.m. Remember that average speed is defined to be distance traveled over change in time. Another reminder is that speed is the absolute value of velocity. Speed does not have sign. It is always positive. Speed doesn't care about direction. It just cares about the magnitude of how fast you are traveling and not the direction. So speed itself is the absolute value of the velocity function. So let's graph that for a moment. You guys are pros at figuring out what these polynomials look like. This v of t is particularly easy to factor. So let's first graph v of t and then we'll graph the absolute value of v of t. So we know v of t is an upward facing parabola that has zeros at 3 and negative 1. Now what's important to know is that if we were going to take perhaps in a different color pen, red, and graph the absolute value of v of t, we would take that part where it's negative between negative 1 and 3 and flip it over the x-axis like so. If we wanted to find the total distance traveled, what we need to do is now find the definite integral under this new absolute value of v function. And this is because the total distance traveled doesn't care about sign. It considers any non-zero velocity, positive or negative, the same way as contributing positively to the speed. So what you're doing to find total distance traveled is you're sort of ignoring the sign, making everything positive, and then just integrating the absolute value of the velocity function over the interval that we care about. Now our interval is still 0 to 4, but because this function has a kink in it here, we're going to have to integrate it piece by piece because this part right here 
is no longer governed by the v of t, that's 3t squared minus 6t minus 9. We had to flip that over the x-axis, which means there are two ways that you could possibly integrate it. You could say, hey, between 0 and 3, right, right here, that's actually going to be negative 3t squared plus 6t plus 9, because we multiplied it by negative 1 to flip it over. Or you could just compute it 0 to 3 and then change the sign, because you know you're going to get something all negative and then change the sign because you want it to be a positive area. Whichever way you decide, you will get the same answer. And then you will separately do the same integral of old v of t, because note that the absolute value of v and v are the same from 3 to 4, and integrate that from 3 to 4, and then add those two together. So what do we have here? So there's our sum of our two different functions that together are going to represent the integral of the absolute value of v of t from 0 to 4. And then we just take their antiderivatives, term by term, and compute them. Here we have it. All I did was integrate term by term. I made sure to be really careful about evaluating at 3 minus evaluated at 0. I used my answer from up here to evaluate it at 4, and then evaluated at 3, which we actually had over here. But the sign has changed because this is negative 1 times that function. We end up with 34 as being the total distance traveled. And of course, we now need to divide that by the change in time which is 4, and we end up with 17 halves, and that's meters per minute. Definitely a worthwhile problem to review, understanding the difference between velocity and how to use velocity and its definite integrals to compute change in position versus speed, how to take a velocity function, create a speed function, which was that red curve, and then integrate that to get distance traveled, total distance traveled, sort of regardless of direction. And so we close with our true or false question. It says the average velocity of a moving object between time A and time B is simply the average of its velocities at times A and B. And this is actually going to be false. You can think of it this way. What if someone went starting at time A, began at rest, then went sprinting down the hallway for 10 seconds, maybe B was 10, and then stopped immediately at time B, which is 10. Now, their average velocity over that time, if you wanted to compute it using this idea that average velocity would be the average velocity at time A and time B, well, since they were technically at rest at both time A and time B, their average velocity would be zero. But given that they spent most of those 10 seconds sprinting down the hallway, their average velocity is not zero. You can see that over that period of time, their average velocity is definitely going to be positive. That's how they ended up making it from one point in the hallway down to the next point in the hallway. So that's an example of perhaps an object is at rest at time A and time B, but moving otherwise, in which case their average velocity is not going to be zero. It's going to be something else. And so that's a good lesson here. You can also double check whether that's true by actually computing what it would be if you plugged in 0 and 4 here. And again, you wouldn't get what we computed in part A, which was negative 5. But that's an excellent problem to take a look at. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask. And good luck studying your antiderivatives.